All right, here we are for yet another episode of Dave's Garage. We've got that installed. Um, I did just go and take these bolts out and then tighten those ones there. So now it's not wiggling as much. They're a little loose, so tighten those up before you install the screen. It's very simple, effective. We'll keep some of the wind off of me, although I'm pretty tall, so I'm gonna make catch a little more buffeting around the helmet. But when I have my camera mounted here for a cockpit view, um, it'll keep the wind off it and should get better uh, audio quality. I wanted to do voiceovers. So anyway, what are we doing now? We're going to install this. And at some point, someone's going to go, what model number, part number? Right there. That is the part number that we are using. So that is the DNA filter. That is for this bike. I got it from Moto Wheels. And that looks like the right one. Unlike the last video we made. So... How do we get this all out of here? Well, you got to pull two pins. There's two little push pins that go where this finger is and then here. Pop those out and then you can take this off. Set this aside somewhere safe. Ducati. Ducati is safe. Then you got to take out a screw. 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 And then this, this will start to come off. We're going to have to take out these screws up top. That screw. And we have to start pulling pieces off. We're gonna have to loosen this so we can tilt this up. I'm gonna hopefully be able to tilt that up far enough and hold it in place with a board or hook a uh, one of these a little bungee cord and we'll hook it to somewhere on the tail to that so we can prop the tank up. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. So screws coming off of here, one, two, three, two pins, two screws, another screw, Obviously, the same goes on both sides. And then we'll start uh, pulling this thing apart. I'm not going to be talking for much of this part, so I'm going to turn my fan on because it is hot as balls in my garage. So, uh, let's see. Maybe I'll put it over on this side so at least it's a little further away from the fan. And you can see a little bit of what's going on here. And then we'll get the airbox apart and... All that good stuff. All This is great. All of my screws, apparently, even though I used the lowest setting on the drill last time, these are all apparently over torqued. And they're starting to strip. There. Note to self when you put these on, they don't need to be that tight. I didn't feel like they were that tight, but anytime you use a friggin' power tool, run the risk yep some of these are gonna be a bitch to get off and they're really soft metal too so they strip quite easily I might have to just take off the tank can you get the tank up here this will make this easier pull off the breather hoses bottom there's a plug. Uh, 
Nothing ever goes fucking simple. That screw stripping out. So, I'm gonna remove the electrical wire for the goddamn fuel pump. May have to do it from the other side. And I'm not gonna be able to film this part. You guys will just have to figure it out. Sorry, I'm getting frustrated because nothing ever fucking goes as planned. It should be simple, and it just never is. I have to get this quick detach off. That's the only thing holding this thing in. Uh, wait, no, so I still gotta unplug. I gotta fucking do that too. God damn it. Nothing is ever, ever, ever simple for me. <laughs> so, it's like, I'll come out and just do this real quick. Yeah, no. It's not how it works. get this clip off because every company does them differently and it's not like you got a lot of room to work in but somehow I have to get that clip down you go find another tool I can't remember how to get that goddamn thing off. You can't get your hand in there. Not if you, unless you're like a six year old Asian person. I don't remember how to get that fucking thing off. Shit. We'll be back. All right, we're back. I'm a little less annoyed now. I cannot stress this enough. When you put these screws back in to put the air box back together, don't tighten them very tight. The heat expands, contracts, and the, heat, and the problem is the screws are not hardened steel. They're really, really soft. They almost feel like aluminum. So if you tighten it too much and you go, they, they set in there and get stuck, you're going to end up stripping them, trying to get them out. I had to grab the heads of a couple of them with vice grips to get them to turn a little bit just to break that tension, and then I could back them out. Anyway. We got our drain plugs, our, our uh, overflows and stuff. Um, mark one with tape. I did this one, I put the clip near the end and the other one further back. That one goes on the outside. The one that's further back goes on the inside. And then you got your electrical plug, which is under here that goes to the fuel pump. And then you just have to pop this tab down and then just carefully wiggle the thing off. And then when you put it back, you just push that in and it locks it in. Take out all your screws all the way around and then just wiggle and finagle your air lid off. At this point, you've got your filter. You're gonna pop this out, inspect it, make sure there's nothing floating around, bugs, rocks, anything didn't make its way in there. Everything looks nice and clean. I'm gonna take the new filter out. It is keyed on one side. I'm gonna put the camera down for one second. And I apologize for the fan noise, but it's like 100 degrees in my fucking garage right now. And I'm sitting there trying to concentrate while sweat's pouring down my forehead into my eyes. This is going to go in to that slot like that. 
Make sure it's down in there and seated properly and everything's all lined up. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna put the lid on, carefully slide that on and put everything back in place. So we'll be back and start it up and make sure everything's working. I guess I'll set this off to the side, you can watch. things and they just don't fucking work. That is 100% the right filter for this bike. But when it goes in, it's too tight left to right, so it ends up bowing it like this. And when it's bowed, it won't go into that flat track. There has to be a way to make this work. <laughs> I can't keep taking my bike apart to put in the filter, only for filters to just not fit. I don't know how else to get this in there. That is just not going to work. DNA, you know, I've, I've used DNA filters. They're considered high quality filters. It's a $130 fucking filter. And the fit is too tight. It's causing it to buckle a little bit and then it doesn't lock up with that channel. And I can't get my hand down in there to straighten it. So rather than you watch me fiddle and then eventually just throw this piece of shit in the trash and go back to the stock air filter, I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and fiddle with this for a while and, I'll report back if I get the thing in there. If not, I'm going to be sending this video to DNA to say, fix your damn problem with your shitty filters. We'll be back. All right, it's back together, but I'm going to make a recommendation. Don't get the DNA filter. Honestly, the fit, the fit on it is horrible. It took me 25 minutes to get that filter in there. The tolerances are just off a little bit with the padding that they use to seal the rubber gasket. It's a little bit too thick, so it's too tight. And when you put it in there, it causes it to buckle and bend very slightly, which then it doesn't line up with the track. And even though I tried greasing it and moving it around, eventually I got enough where I'm like, that'll do. And the lid was rocking a little bit with a little bit of gap. It wasn't, I just tightened the screws. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just, I'm tired of dealing with this shit. Um, I'll probably replace it with another brand, but as far as the MT-10 goes, for the new ones anyway, the DNA filters do not recommend. Fit and finish is horrible. Uh, I mean, they look nice, but as far as how they actually fit in there, they just, they don't fit right. So now I gotta put this all back together, get the tank back on, and then we'll fire it up and make sure I don't get any weird errors or uh, anomalies. So we'll be back shortly. Oh, all right, everybody. It's all back together. This was by far the most annoying hair filter change I've ever done. I do not recommend the DNA filter. I'm going to take a clip of it not fitting and send it to them and be like, you guys need to tweak the design a little bit. I can't believe I'm, can't imagine I'm the only one having this trouble, but it just physically didn't fit exactly right. I had to eventually just kind of mash it in there and I'm assuming there's no gaps. I don't freaking know. I'm just, yeah, sometimes you're just like, you know what? I'm just not going to worry about it. Whatever happens, happens. I think it's in there fine. We'll see. So, uh, let's see if it starts. No check engine codes. That means I plugged everything in.